2023. Yeah, indeed. I am back and I am here to answer your garden questions each and every week. We're going to do it on Sunday mornings at eight o'clock. Let me know what you think of that time. Let me know what you think of that day. And maybe there's some ways that we can adjust while commenting on something different. For those that are here, for, my name is Frank Ferragini, aka Frankie Flowers of City TV's Breakfast Television City Line, four time best selling garden author as well. A lifetime of garden experience and really agriculture and horticultural experiences. My family has two garden centers, but as well, we used to be farmers in the Holland and Cooksdale Marsh, and I still have cousins that farm in the uh, Holland Marsh. If you ever see, uh, if you go to the LCBO and you'll see uh, a vodka and or gin called Sight Vodka or Gin, that is my cousin's Riga Farms that is taking leftover carrots, leftover beets, combining them with corn and turning it into vodka and gin. Yeah, my family, I'm telling you, we got dirt under our fingers all the time. So I come here each and every week to uh, to join with you, to uh, be able to be here to answer your questions. If I don't get to your questions, what happens is the I encourage them to go on to those comments and to help answer those questions and help guide us all through. Uh, with that, if you're wondering where the heck has I, have I been over the last few weeks? Well, right after, right after we had our live broadcast at the Sheridan Center, I lost my voice uh, and that actually impacted me for pretty much two weeks time. Uh, and you can almost hear it in my voice still where, uh, you know, I wasn't feeling bad. I just was, I just didn't have a voice. Um, and with that, during the holiday season as well, I spent some time with my sons, Gavin and Matheson. We took the opportunity to go hop in the car and go for a drive over to the Eastern townships in Quebec to go do some skiing in Bromont. I love the outdoors. It doesn't matter whether it's gardening, mountain biking, skiing. Uh, if I'm outside and I'm in nature, I am indeed happy. So let's talk a little bit about a few things this morning as well. What we're going to do is uh, give a shout out first of all, uh, off Crystal. Good morning, Crystal. We're going to give a shout out to you. Connie, we're going to give a shout out to Connie as well. And we're going to give a friend out, a shout out as well to my good, good friend, uh, Matthew Amos. Uh, ET show, but he did go see Avatar the other day too. Okay, let's talk about a few things. One thing that I want to show you, and one thing that I worked hard at last year and took a little bit more time than what we thought it would take. Da, da, da. Let me show you that is uh, the Frankie Flowers website, frankieflowers.com. One thing I want to get you excited about as we're heading our way into a new garden season this year is what is on trend for 2023. This is a full blog post. You can go on frankieflowers.com, take a look at it. And with that as well, you know, just a reminder, just because it's on trend doesn't mean that you have to do it, but it may give you some inspiration. Some of the top trends for 2023, the rise of prices of produce, indeed, people will continue to go and want and uh, maybe expand the vegetable garden and learn more recipes for garden to table. Something that I've been promoting so that you can actually value food, maybe save some money on food, but also eat good food. Food is fuel. For your body. If you want to get healthier, you want to be happier, eat good food. Garden trend number two, container gardening. Now with the amount of people renting properties, I'm thinking that container gardening will even become more popular and even trough gardening will become more popular because those are gardens that you can move with you, but as well, spaces are getting smaller out there as well. Happy colors. Yeah. This year, the one color I don't want in my life is gray. I want clarity in my life and I want brightness in my life. And even though right now the color of the year this year, what is the color of the year? I think it was vivid magenta is the Pantone color of the year. I'm thinking yellows, blues, pinks, the happy colors will be the, we just got so much darkness out there that we need happy in our lives. Gardening for climate change. Hey, low impact gardens, those that are easy on us, but also easy on the environment and also designing gardens for maybe flash floods. And also looking at the difference in our plant material now is changing as the Climate is getting warmer, warmer out there. Retro vibes. The 70s are back, baby. Yeah, macrame hangers, back, baby. Spider plants, back, baby. This trend continues not only in fashion, but as in plant material that's out there. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more of the funness that we need to add into our spaces. And you can see disco ball there. Just remember, we're all a little bit of disco balls. Balls, that is. Disco balls. And if you're wondering why I'm saying that, it's a quote I read. We're all broken pieces of glasses put together. And if the light is on us in the right way, we are the most beautiful thing ever. So let the light shine on you. And remember, we're all those broken pieces of glass put together. Uh, garden trend number six, garden retreats. Either building a space for mental wellness or going to spaces and taking in gardening 
and taking in nature is something that we huge in 2023 and much needed in 2023 as well. So those are just some of the garden trends that I'm seeing for 2023. If you want to read a little bit more further, I would encourage you to go to frankieflowers.com. Also, if you haven't, sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter is coming out this week, uh, a monthly newsletter, and there's lots of good information that's in there. The newsletter is really to bring value to you, to kind of give you a little insight in what I'm doing, and also some things that I like. Like one thing I'm going to feature is this newsletter is about something that I got before going on my ski trip that changed my life, that changed my life. Okay, so let's get to uh, some other comments and or questions this morning that we have out there. We're going to give, there's another shout out to Krista Allen. Happy New Year from the Allens to you and your family. Hey, Happy New Year to everybody out there. I hope that 2023, and somebody was telling me that it's two plus two plus three equals seven. Seven is a lucky number. So let's hope that 23 is going to be your number and your year as well. Uh, Jen, good morning from Camelford. My good friend, Christine, out there in Prince Edward County, who dug out of the snow that's now melted. Good morning to you. Uh, Nancy, uh, good morning to you out there as well. Lori Lee, hey, great to see you this morning. This morning as well. Miriam, good morning to you. Thank you as well. I'm great. I'm actually so good. That's the best way to say it. Uh, buongiorno. Dominica. Buongiorno to you as well. Uh, good morning and a happy new year. I love all these shout outs that we're getting from Brenda that's out there. Good morning from Ancaster as well, just outside of Hamilton. Uh, we got a magenta that works for me, Hubert or Hubert. Uh, magenta is a beautiful color. It's a very rich, deep, lush color. And there are so many different plants and plant material that we can have in that magenta tone. Uh, although it's magenta is the leading color for Pantone, which is generally the leading color for fashion and interior decor, I'm really thinking and I'm seeing, I'm seeing in a lot of pots and what I'm seeing at a lot of the garden shows that are happening right now, the, the trade shows, meaning the B2B, the business to business trade shows is bright, is bright. So while magenta is a great color, I'm not disputing magenta is not a great color, vivid magenta. I'm just thinking that people out there will want a little bit more brightness. If you agree with me, hey, let's see. Uh, Frankie, how's it going? Uh, there we go. Cheryl, well, I think we have a question now. Um, okay, hi Frankie, how do I stop the burning of my grass along the driveway? So first off, why do, does grass tend to burn along the driveway more so? Well, if you look at your driveway and it's a black pavement driveway, we know that black, uh, absorbs heat. It will absorb and attract the sunlight. So that black pavement driveway will become excessively hot. And because it's excessively hot, the areas to the exterior right along the side of the driveway will dry faster than any other portion of your lawn. Also, your lawn is a cool temperature plant. So along the driveway, it's going to burn if it doesn't have adequate water. A couple of things that you can do is make sure that you are watering those areas along the driveway a little bit more frequently, more often, more deeply. The other thing too, is to make sure that you are in the summer months, raising the blade of the lawnmower to about three and a half inches. That taller blade will actually help shade out and will help. If that continues, the other reason why sometimes we get burning of the grass along the side of the driveway is when they went to install the, the driveway, they, their limestone screenings and all the aggregative, the material underneath, extends over a little bit beyond. And so the soil quality underneath the lawn along the driveway is not that great. A little bit more drainage that's there, so it even dries faster. So sometimes even tearing out that area, digging down and improving the soil along that to absorb moisture and to also be better for the plant material itself, being grass, it will do that much better out there. So those are some of the reasons that are there. And those are the questions that we help answer here. Good question there, by the way, out there as well. Uh, we got another good morning shout out this morning. Nice thought from Linda. I do. I love that thought of a disco ball because like when you see a disco ball, it's the seventies, it's fun. It brings you smiles. And when the light shines off a disco ball, it's just so like, it's so beautiful, right? But we are, we're all like those broken pieces of glass in life, all those moments in life that, you know, have broken us, but then, you know, you put us together and with all those experiences, we're a disco ball. You know, if you have the right music in life and the right light, you're going to dance, baby, dance and dance well and be beautiful. Uh, good morning, Frankie Flowers. Happy New Year to you as well. Good morning. Hey, my good friend, Tanya. Tanya, we still got to go for a walk with the dogs. I know Tanya's traveling all over the place. Tanya works for Ball Horticulture, uh, one of the Ball Seed and Ball Flora Plant and all those companies as well, Selecta. Those are kind of the people that bring seeds and plants to growers that then 
will uh, bring those plants to you. So Tanya's out there. She's the one that keeps me in store and, and, and keeps me informed about what's going on in the world of gardening. She's a good friend that lives locally and somebody who I went to high school with back in the day. High school is just a few years ago, right? Right? Uh, Mary, good morning, Frankie. Happy 2023. I'm in Dunchurch. Uh, and what snow we had has pretty much left. Some of my gardens are bare, bare and we're starting to get colder weather with not much in sight. Is there something I should do to ensure my plants this year? So this is a question I'm getting quite often because now that the snow load has left and really over the last, I would say 10 days, we felt very much like spring in Southern Ontario. And we have seen some of the plant material sprout up. Is there anything that you can do? Really at this moment, the best thing that you can do is just let nature take its course. Uh, you know, putting additional soil or trying to insulate or putting some leaves and things like that can help, but also can harm even more so. So the plant material will rebound. The plant material could be impacted. We could have fewer and less blooms this season. Some things will be blooming at different times. Uh, the, the magnolias, because I have seen some magnolias bud swell quite big, which is a concern. There's nothing you can do to cover those up. If you wanted to put burlap around, but really if we get a temperature that's going to be mm, really cold uh, and really it's the winds. Burlap will help in that instance if you wanted to do a burlap string. But overall, my main recommendation is just to let nature take its course because really in nature, there's nothing out there that's helping them. So these are just kind of what we need to go through. And this is starting to become the new norm that's out there as well. Uh, Lori, uh, good morning. Hi, Frankie. I'm trying to overwinter my rosemary. I have my rosemary inside here. I'm watering every two weeks or so. Should I fertilize it at all? Thanks. Uh, don't fertilize it right now at this moment. I would wait till about mid-March before you start fertilizing. Fertilizing in March, what I would just use is a water-soluble, all-purpose miracle Grow. Water it first and fertilize thereafter. And you're going to be fertilizing it once a month until you put it outdoors. The key is, is that our homes right now are quite dry or getting drier. So uh, usually you want a humidity level about 30, 40% inside your home for plants. And if it's below that, adding a humidifier, not only is it going to benefit the plants, it'll actually benefit you, better air quality for you. And those are really the main things. Make sure that that uh, rosemary does not sit too wet for too long uh, because that's the main harm of overwintering a ro rosemary is for it to go into root rot for sitting too wet. Being in a south or west facing room with bright light, not directly in front of a window is key. Don't put it directly in front of a door or a sliding door that you're going in and out of. Uh, and don't put it near any heating vents. Or so those are some of the things that you need to do. I hope that helped you. Uh, Hubert saying a happy 2023. Boom, 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 boom. YouTube, buddy. Uh, Don, what's going on, Don? Welcome back. Good to be back, by the way. Tallest grass for privacy. And when do I plant it? Uh, that's a great question that's out there. So ornamental grasses, you can be planting them first thing with planting. You can be planting them best ideal time is spring and or uh, late summer, early fall. Those are the best, but you can plant if they're container grown. Depends on the zone that you live. There are many miscanthus varieties that are out there that will go five to six feet in height. But really, we have to look at the hardiness zone that they're going to overwinter for you. One of the most tallest attractive grasses that are out there are the pompous grass because they put a beautiful plume up top. They get a very nice height. But there's a bunch of different ones. I would really, one of the best resources to take a look at perennials and ornamental grasses is perennials.com. So take a look at perennials.com. Uh, you're going to need to determine what zone you're in. If you're watching me in Southern Ontario, you could feel confident with anything that's hardy to a zone five in some areas zone six. Um, but if you are in Northern Ontario, you're going to be more of a zone four. If you're watching me in areas like Calgary, you're zone four to zone three. Uh, if you're in Vancouver, your zone, if you're in uh, White Rock, Vancouver watching, your zone could be a zone seven. Uh, there's actually even warmer areas of white rock because there's even palm trees that do well there. So take a look at perennials.com. Look at miscanthus. That's the varietal. That's actually the, the cultivar. There's many different miscanthus that's out there. There's one called zebra grass. Doesn't grow that tall, but it's a really great vigorous grass. The other recommendation I have for you when you're buying ornamental grasses, make sure that they're mounding grasses. What it means by mounding grass, when you read in the description, is they'll mound, they actually won't send runner roots out and then become invasive. So really take a look at that, that's over there. Uh, good morning. Uh, Miriam, Frankie, crinium stars and stripes are perennial plants, are not. Um, hmm. 
I'm going to take a look at that because I don't know. This is what we, uh, stars and stripes. So I guess best thing to do is I'm going to look it up here. Uh, beautiful looking plant, by the way, it's actually a bulb. It's a lily variety hardiness zone. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, so I'm going to pop this up for people so that everybody can see as well. Um, actually, well, here we are. I'm getting a little bit of misinformation that's here because one was a, it was a zone hardiness eight to 10. This one, this one here, which is, uh, a perennial flowering bulb. So let me pull this up for people so they can see what we're talking about. Uh, and I, sometimes I don't know all the plant material that's out there and I'll admit when I don't know something, I'll just look it up with you. It's the best thing that we can do that's out there because I really want to make sure that we get the right information that's out there. So this is a, a bulb company, which is out of the, the Netherlands, of course. Um, so here you go. So it is, the hardiness zones is three to 10, meaning that it would be hardy for a region. However, however, Miriam, it says lift and fall in zones three to six. So that this means that this is a coal, this is a summer flowering bulb. The only way to make it over winter is to actually lift it and to bring it indoors. Treating it similarly to a dahlia, treating it similar to a canna lily, like the tubers, uh, a beautiful, cool looking flowering bulb. We'll do this, this. do a block there because I don't want to do that. Um, but there you go. So not a perennial, it's actually a summer flowering bulb is the best way. So that's why sometimes you have to read into the information and have a good look there and try to really determine and or figure out what, like sometimes it's misleading. You know, it says hardy zone three all the way through the 10, but then it's telling you to lift it. It's not hardy. It may be hardy to grow for a summer season, but not hardy to overwinter. So it won't overwinter that's there. Um, we got another question and or comment out there. We got Rosie saying a good happy new year too, to you as well. Health and happiness. Nation's capital. Uh, so if you ever watch us on breakfast television, on breakfast television, uh, Faiza, who works with me, Faiza's from Ottawa. Faiza thinks Ottawa is the best city in the world. I like Ottawa quite a bit. Um, I actually spent a lot of time there delivering plants for my family to Canadian Tire and to some of the Loblaw stores and some of the independent garden centers. So I've been to Barhaven. I've been to Canada. I've been to Bell's Corners. Uh, I've been to many of the areas that are around Renfrew, Armprior, uh, all those areas that are out there. So the, the Ottawa Valley and everything is a really good area that's out there. Uh, good morning to you as well this morning from Sue. May you have a great day out there in the Schwaze, the Oshawa. Good morning to Judy. Have lots of friends that are out there. Great garden centers out that way as well. Good morning from beautiful Gravenhurst. And indeed, Gravenhurst is beautiful. Thank you for all you do to help make our lives greener, happier, and healthier. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? Uh, it's such a pleasure for me to be here to answer garden questions for you. Uh, and then, it, you know, there's a couple things I always learn. So, you know, with some of the plant material that I don't know, some of the questions that you guys are asking that I don't know, I'm learning. I read through the comments after as well. And there's some tips and tricks that are there. And also it's super important for me to keep my mind in the world of gardening very active. So when I worked in my family garden center and I worked there for so many hours, this is something that I did all the time. And if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And so I want to continue to be green, continue to grow. And I want to continue to inspire. Like my main thing is I just want to motivate people to get out there, get into nature, uh, to garden. Because gardening is a physical outdoor leisure activity. So you're going to be healthier, fitter if you garden. If you grow plants, you're going to eat better. If you grow your own food, you're going to eat better. And then also working with nature and being in nature, studies have shown it makes us happier, healthier people. And right now I just see there's just so much darkness out there and there's so many sad people. Uh, and it's okay to be sad, but uh, I'm just thinking, hey, man, plants can make it make us all happier out there. Um, Tanya, she's saying, so excited for Pantone color of the year. It's my favorite color. Tanya, we're going to have to talk about this. We're going to have to, like, it might be your favorite color. But are you going to do all that in your gardens this year? Like, all vivid magenta? Like, Tanya has a ton of containers. We'll have to do a tour of Tanya's containers this year. Uh, Christine, le yes, love colors. Just bought myself some cut flowers to brighten the home. That's something we can do to brighten our homes. Uh, I just had a friend that bought some tulips. And yeah, tulips are available right now. You know, adding an orchid. Orchid, long season, long blooming indoor plant for you. Just, you know, add some of that brightness. That's what you need. Cut flowers, you know, they are, a lot of the times people are like, 
They're such a waste of money. They're such a waste of money. Okay, a bottle of wine, right? Love wine. Love me some wine, right? Like I, I'm going to tell you, like, look, there's my magazine that's there, Wine in Canada. I love me some wine. Like, love it. Wine. It's a $20 bottle. Say $15, $20 bottle, something like that. It lasts me a night. And the next day, I don't feel so good. And really, it's going to add weight onto me. And it's going to take away from my health. Those flowers over there, they're going to last five to seven, some even 10 days as a cut flower. They're going to bring me happiness. They're going to add me joy. So really, really, they're not a waste of money. It's all where you put your priorities, people out there. Um, okay, I want to give a shout out because one of our viewers of the, of the Q&A um, has a book. And so what I want to do is I want to share and give a shout out to them. And I want to show their website first off, and then we'll show their little book that's here because they sent me a copy out there. And I just got to go here and I got to go share. It's called The Wheezies. Uh, so this is the whimsical world of the Wheezies. They're fun books for ch children, two to 10 years of age. Uh, you can check out their website at theweezies.com. Uh, pretty huge accomplishment for anybody. You can see that you can buy it on Amazon. You can do, uh, you can buy it pretty much from Walmart. It's pretty a huge accomplishment uh, for somebody out there to go and publish their own book. Uh, you know, the author themselves, Terry Davies, there he is. He was born in the Wells, uh, but him and his wife came to Canada in 1976. They lived and brought up their three children in Toronto, Ontario. So they sent me some copies that are out there. Uh, and I just really want to give, you know, I want to really this year uh, promote and, and help people out there that are doing great things. It's kind of dark. It's kind of bright, that light. I got to fix the lighting right here. These are things I got to do. Got to do that. So big shout out there to them as well. Um, Matthew's asking me, Matthew's a movie fan. Have I seen Avatar 2? I've not. I was told by a really good friend that the story is based upon uh, two brothers. Um, nature talks a lot about that. And then I will cry in Avatar 2. So I'm waiting for my two boys. My two boys are away with their mom right now. I'm waiting for them to come back to go see Avatar 2 to see if I'm going to cry. Let's see if I'm going to cry. Good morning from St. George. Good morning to you, Pat, out there. Tracy, saying a good Happy New Year to everybody out here from Perry Sound. Dale. Okay. Try growing herbs in the house. Super difficult. The reason being is we just don't have enough light, right? You need a growing system to be really growing herbs indoors at this time of year effectively. So Arrow Garden, great system that's out there. There are other uh, products that are out there as well. I've used one called Click, Click and Grow, but Arrow Garden is great. I have a few pots in my kitchen counter, but they only last a few weeks and don't continue to grow. I brought a few in from my gardens and died off early account. So it's just light levels. So what that means is the duration of light during the day. Our day daylight levels are so low. The growing systems themselves have a light, an LED light, and they're aquaponics. So they grow in water. They really take care of everything for you and they will continuously grow that are out there. Uh, they're tabletop. So if you're just looking for, and not a huge amount of herbs, but just for something to bring you freshness during the winter season, it's something I totally rec uh, recommend. So check out Arrow Garden, uh, and that's A-E-R-O garden.com, or you can check out Click and, Click and Grow that's out there as well. There's lots of growing systems that are out there, but those are just a few. Uh, good morning from The Rock this morning from Newfoundland. Happy year, uh, New Year to you as well, Patricia out there. Uh, we have got a question this morning about one of my favorite plants, daffodils, narcissi. Uh, started to sprout. Will they still be okay in the spring? Yes, they will. If you're wondering why Frankie is a fan of daffodils, uh, they're poisonous to squirrels. Uh, I love the color of yellow in spring because uh, yellow to me is sunshine. Uh, they're also perennialized, meaning you don't have to lift them. They actually will naturalize. You will have to divide them after a few years because they will get into clusters. But I am, well, I'm, I'm daffodil over tulip. Daffodils to me rule over tulips. Tulips are prettier. I'll give you that. But just a little bit more work that's out there. Carol. Uh, time to take down the extra uh, uh, Christmas decorations down. Carol King, yeah, make sure. You got a Christmas tree in your home right now, a fresh cut Christmas tree, get it out as soon as possible. I took those Christmas decorations down on December the 30th. Yeah, I love them. Love Christmas, love decorations, love everything about it. But then I just had that time that day that was going on there. Can I submerge a plant in soapy water to rid it of mealybugs? Uh, you can, you can do that, but really it's not the submerging that's going to take care of the mealy bug. 
it's really when you're even an insecticidal soap, when you're spraying that on, it's the, the coating on that. But sometimes with mealybugs, using a horticultural oil is really important as well. So I, the soaking is not going to do any more benefit than doing a spraying both top side and underside of leaves with an insecticidal soap or something like called Bug Be Gone can help you there as well. But also consider about horticultural oils that are out there as well. If you have more questions, Shauna, always email me and I can give you a little bit of a, of a recipe to go through. So email me, Shauna, it's frankie at frankieflowers.com. If that plant is really invest, infested with mealybugs, like really infested, uh, the mealybugs are not the easiest thing to control. If that plant's not a plant that costs a ton of money or you don't have any emotional connection to, sometimes the best thing to do is to remove that plant and put efforts towards a newer plant. Uh, Tanya, where's she heading? Heading to the largest horticultural trade show in the world in Essen, Germany. She invited me to go in two weeks. I'll send you some pics and videos of what's trending in Europe. That's awesome. You know what? Maybe what we'll do is we'll get Tanya as well on this after her trip there. Uh, Tanya, I'm sorry. I couldn't go. Just schedule. Boys, coaching hockey, all these things. I just, I just couldn't do it. I wanted to. Like, I really wanted to. Uh, what would be the new trend for plants in the garden in Ontario and in Canada? This is Hubert. So if we think about low-impact gardening, one of the biggest trends that's going out there is plant material that we can put in our garden that is disease and insect resistant, super important, right? So that we're not really going to the plant pharmacy and using uh, things like insecticides and fungicides to control disease. So disease, insect resistant, something that has a long extended period of garden interest. So either a long bloom period or really interesting foliage and something that's not invasive. That's the criteria that's on trend right now in plants and should be on trend. Um, and those are native plants. Some native plants are really on trend. And then there are also some new plant varieties that are out there that are exceptional varieties. There are some new varieties of Encanasia that give you long bloom periods that are really quite fantastic. There are new varieties of sedum that are really great too. So we're looking for plants that are low, easy care for plants that have great art garden interest. Those are the ones that are on trend and should be on trend. It's kind of like survival of the fittest in your garden. And I'm going to do a talk on that, why we need to select gardens to be survival of the fittest. Good morning. This is from Eli, I think, or Eli. I'm really bad sometimes because I can't really see. Uh, good morning. I have a hibiscus plant. I've had it for about 10 years. It's about five feet high on a 24 inch base container. I'm worried now that the leaves are turning yellow and we're losing them. Never seen it like that. Happy New Year from Winnipeg. So in Winnipeg, you guys have been running quite cold. So that means that the heaters in your homes have gone on a little bit further. With that, that would create a drying in the home. So that hibiscus plant, if you have any type, there are many different ways that you can measure humidity in your home. So you can even get a, a humidity meter that will help you with that. You can find those online quite easily. So adding a humidifier, really the key, 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 with that plant is to allow it to dry out into watering, but because it's such a mature plant and being even in that large of a container, it's probably drying out pretty quickly because it's probably all root. It's probably all root, very little soil that's there. So you may want to be just pay attention to the watering of that. The yellowing leaves, the yellowing leaves in a hibiscus is an indication of either too much water or too little water. Uh, adverse, uh, a lack of humidity is one thing. Any change in, um, environment let's say that it's near your heating vent anything like that so just be pay attention to that uh, a closer inspection of the leaves themselves if you want i can really dive deep into this for you you can send it a picture to me frankie at frankieflowers.com that's my email but generally it's humidity lack of water or too much water that are causing those and because it's 10 years old and quite mature and it's in such a, a 24 inch container it may sound large but if it's that mature of a hibiscus plant it's probably drying out quite rapidly because you have versus us here in Ontario, where we've gone through like seven days of cloud, you have seen actually some good significant sunshine in the prairies and into Winnipeg and into Manitoba. So it's probably, that's probably what's going on. Probably a little bit of lack of water that out there. Um, and then here's a good, a good little tip for you too, with some of the annual varieties you were asking what about plants on trend this year, Tanya chimed in as well because I was giving you some examples of perennials, lots of pollinators like salvia and lantana, bold, bright colors like magentas and yellows. So bright, happy colors that are out there. The perennial varieties of salvia, I've always loved salvia mystic spires. 
It's probably one of my go-tos that are out there. But those perennial, those annuals, forgive me, those annual salvias, like the mystic spires, the amount of hummingbirds they attract, mind blown. Like it's amazingly so many hummingbirds that are out there. Good morning this morning as well. We got a shout out from St. Catherine's this morning. Uh, so we're going on 30 minutes right now. I'm just going to look for one other question. Uh, here's a question for you that are, what are the best vegetables to winter sow in Mississauga? Okay, so right now, there was something I wanted to get to as well, is what should we be doing in January? And January is the time for us to plan for our upcoming gardens. So if you're growing vegetables, you may be thinking about sowing seeds indoors for your upcoming vegetable garden. So first thing is, is if you're a new time gardener, Sowing your own seeds, there are some ones that are super easy, like cucumbers, zucchinis, uh, beans, super easy. And you're going to sow those actually quite late, almost in mid-April. Um, the other plants that you can sow indoors, if you're somebody that's an experienced gardener and you want to do that, one of the ones that you're starting for vegetable gardens the most earliest are tomatoes and peppers. Those are the ones that are a little earlier. Um, you generally look to your seed packs and then your seed packs are going to say sow six to eight weeks. Uh, before last frost date. So most tomato plants, we're really not sowing till the end of February or the middle of February for tomatoes and vegetables. So it's still early to sow. What are the best ones to winter sow? It's the ones that number one, before you get out there and you're thinking about what vegetables to grow, it should be, what do I eat? Right? There's no need to sow a eggplant or grow eggplant if you don't friggin' like eggplant. So Sit down with your family, talk about, hey man, what do we like to eat? What do we want to grow? This is a great activity to get involved with your spouse uh, or your kids. I really like getting involved with your kids with this and say, hey, what do we want to eat? What do we want to grow? And then go from there. And then look to the seed packs themselves <coughs> and then determine, sorry, if I'm going to sow seeds, right? What do I need? I need space. I need time. And I will need light. So. Do you have the space? Do you have the time? And do you have adequate light? Do you have bright rooms that are there, like south or west facing? <clears throat> and then you'll learn the experience. You will have some failures along the way. So I'm gonna let you guys go today because I still got lots to go. I got to coach hockey this afternoon. Um, hope you guys have a great Sunday overall. Health and happiness to you in 2023. I'll be here every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We'll see you soon. We'll keep you on trend. We'll keep informing you. And for the questions I didn't get to, uh, please, if you have some comment, <laughs> <coughs> sorry maybe a dust bunny in there if you have some comments put those comments in and help those other gardeners we're all a community and let's stay growing let's keep our fingers and knees dirty this year but let's keep clean people clean you know which way to keep clean